pray, Father, we come to you this morning. You've heard our songs. You know our hearts, Father. Thank you for the reminder this morning that we come to these places, even during our week. We've got a list of things that we would ask for and bring to you. Often, Father, to the neglect of the bigger picture. Father, we thank you for word we hear of distant lands and places where the good news is spreading. Far and wide, the longing and hunger of people that have received the good news to take it to other places. O oh Lord, that the nations would know, all the nations, the good news of Jesus, the hope of your word, the promise of your word, Father. And so we ask for it today. Father, we thank you for the thieves, for their ministry, for the decades that they spent in ministry to the nation of Haiti, Father. For the impact, for the love that they have, Father, and then the message that they bring to us today, to us as well, Lord, that our hearts would be open and attentive, ready to respond to you, Father, as your Spirit speaks through them to our hearts. So, Father, anoint and bless them in this moment as they bring your word to us, the message, the story of what's going on through their ministry in Haiti. Lord, you know each and every life here this morning. You know the petitions, the requests, the praises, and we join together with them, Father. And Father, we would this morning that not a person would leave this place without the hope of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Earlier when I said that the uh, feeds Corey and Chris, by the way, we've been blessed this morning with their whole family to be with us. I know many of you have known the Thedes for a long time. That's what I meant by they're our oldest missionaries. By the way, if it helps you guys at all, I kind of did some figuring, and I don't think you're actually our oldest missionaries. I think there are other missionaries that are older. But uh, Friendship was saying for almost the 20 years that they've been in uh, ministry in Haiti has supported their ministry. But uh, Corey and Chris brought with them Elijah and Anna, and their family's growing for us anyway, because it's the first time that some of us are meeting Fritz Lynn. Great to have him here this morning, make him feel honored. I assume he's back in the kids' program, so uh, be sure to grab a hold of him, say hi to him this morning. Um, and uh, so it's, uh, it's an honor this morning uh, to see, and I said in first service, it's really like welcoming family here. I haven't had myself. I feel that that was one of the privilege of actually seeing the ministry in Haiti. But we have a number of folks here who have. Um, one of our latest trips was to Haiti. And so they they are very glad this morning that these are here to share with us. Corey and Chris, whatever the Lord's laid on your heart, you bring it to share with us this morning. It is. to keep their kids in school. 
cool. Well, how do you then send missionaries? Because they need support. Like, do you guys support us? The Asian churches are going to have to figure out. Well, the hurricane came during our, you know, we're doing the same things we normally do. And the hurricane came two years ago, and Corey and I did a couple survey trips for the Westlands to the southern coast to see how we could help. And we had set up a third one in November, and we tied it in with meetings on Laguna. And the national church, to address some of this not having money for ministry, had decided they had brought a property, and they wanted to turn a profit agriculturally. So they asked Corey to come and advise them on what to do to make a profit. And so back to back with these meetings, um, we went up the mountain to see, see the new land. And um, we started out and had mechanical problems and all that stuff, you know, when you're doing something for the Lord, it's going to happen. And so we had a late start and we started up the mountains. And I'm from Allegan, not a lot of mountains, but on the way up, this little thought went through. I could live in the mountains. And uh, we got up there late and we met with a young couple that have only been up there a couple of years as missionaries. And they pretty much we just listened to them talk to the, our national church leaders about the area. And um, oh, on the way up, Corey, we were told of two hours. And so we're getting to the closer to the two hour mark. And Corey's like, where are we going? Because somewhere in our minds, we have this nice flat land agriculture. And we're on these mountain roads. <coughs> They said, you see that ridge over there? If that cloud weren't there, you could see where we're going. Go. Okay. And we got up there, and again, this is after the hurricane, and to hear them talk about to hear them talk about having a clinic, medical clinic, for 600 kids with protein malnourishment, something I've rarely seen in Haiti. And they talked about people having to walk five, six hours to get medical and that there was, they, they raise beans and corn and, and beef, but they only feed their kids corn, which is why they have the malnourishment. And that's an educational issue. And there's not a lot of churches up there. It doesn't look like there's many people here. Well, they farm up and they live down further where there's better water. There are thousands of people in these mountains that really don't have a whole lot of um, um, evangelical training. And so it was getting dark and we were in the clouds and it's the night before national elections, so there's curfew. And um, getting the pastors back in the truck, they had to say their goodbyes. And I grabbed Corey's hand and I said, could you see us living up here? And he was all focused on this. It, on a good day, if you're going without a load, this 16 miles takes you two hours. And this was not a good day because we're dark and we have clouds and rain. And, and Corey's focused and he said, no, our truck is not naked this trip anytime soon. And then the pastors get in and they're excited and they want to talk about the plans for the land. Um, and I, in my head I'm saying, but Corey, Corey doesn't know we're moving yet, God. We can't sit and have a meeting until he knows. <laughs> then the pastor started thinking about voting and they had to get back to port. So we dropped them off. And before we got to where we were spending the night, Corey knew we were moving too. And within just a couple of weeks, we had all the permission needed to, to try to open basically a new mission station. Um, we've always lived on mission stations for, that have been established for 50 some years in Haiti. Haiti has not had a new station in 30 plus years. Um, and so then March rolled around and we were in with all the other missionaries and the discussion was how are we gonna build a house on top of a mountain? Well, the young people we stayed in um, backed up ahead of myself. We were talking about, well, maybe we have to drive up and down. Well, yeah, that's four plus hours a day on a really bad road. And we talked about the young couple that was up there had lived in a tent. We thought we were a little too old to sleep in a tent. Um, we talked about building a shed. We talked about a container. And um, the month after that, as we were praying, the young couple called us up and they said, we have a medical issue and we have to leave country. Would you stay in our house Make sure the rodents don't move in. Yeah. They have um, 14 kids in a children's home up there, and they had three teachers, two American teachers. And I'm like, you could give logistics to them and stay in the house. And the teacher from California calls it clamping because we have power some of the time, water some of the time. But we had really nice beds, and we would have froze if we would have been in a tent. And the Lord just opened this up, and we stayed there from basically last July 
and we moved the last of our stuff out and into our house the first part of May before we came out because Frisland had finally got his visa and we could travel. And it's just amazing how the Lord has worked this together because they were out, they're still out in Mapoli. And so our being there really helped with some, cover some of their ministry. Um, we, our little truck is in that picture. That's 11 years and you know, we bump our heads on bad roads and it's not closed in. And we're like, you know, we really need a mountain vehicle. It's really hard for the tires. And so one day when we were going to visit Fritz Lynn before he was home, we just said, well, we're gonna just make a list. We're just gonna dream. What would we need in a vehicle? You know, bigger vehicle, Corey still wanted it white, diesel. Um, I wanted a snorkel so we could drive through the rivers and it's just cool for missionary kids. And Anna wanted a hammock in the back. And literally before the next day was up, and we really hadn't got to the praying stage yet. We were just dreaming. The Lord provided us a vehicle from friends of ours who were moving to the States and um, had everything we had, had listed, including the hammock and a fan that we had and a chair, a camping chair came with it. And this has made lots of trips already up the mountain, hauling stuff in a team. And we really hadn't even prayed for it yet. And it's just God has been so faithful from the 20, 20 years and continues to be, even though things are really tough. We got his visa, we came out just in time for area retreat, which was Global Partners Missionaries from Central, South, and America, and the Caribbean. And we sat in our first meeting, and Dan Irving said, the last church build that went down in the earthquake for the Westlands is done. It took us eight years, but all the churches are now, again, under roof. And most of the churches that were, went down two years ago with the hurricane have been rebuilt. So now instead of responding to crisis, we're going to go in a new direction and we're going to um, focus on, again, what the national church wants and our new push is agriculture. And Corey and I are like, whoa. So what came out of that is we have three other missionaries that they were working on those builds and working with teams. They're now assigned to basically our team, um, team leader. It's going to be the Agricultural Ministry Partnership Team, which is AMP. And to, just to amplify the impact and that agriculture, if we can get the National Church property, we'll probably be looking at a second property to make a profit to pump into their ministries, as well as to bless every Haitian farmer. If we can help every little family do a little bit better in their crops and their health, they're going to put into their church, they're going to put into their community. So it's helping Haitians support family, community, and church. And so that's just some brand new directions that God has taken. And bigger, one of the biggest things for us is we want to bump our prayer support up hugely. So the country's unstable as of last week. And the missionary family has been feeling a lot of attacks of late. And Corey's going to kind of go on that a little bit more. And um, But we thank you for your prayers and prayers for adoption and our kids transitioning and all that. And we do have new prayer cards because our kids don't like to see old prayer cards. So make sure you pick those up. And for Global Partners to be our partners in prayer, it's once a week. Uh, we prefer hourly or daily, but once a week is all you have to do. So thank you for helping us stay on the field and continue uh, ministering there on your behalf. Yeah, well, so thank you, too. I think I'll stand over here so I don't block the, uh, <laughs> maybe block the least for here if this works. So, but yeah, we're... <coughs> It's been a challenge trying to build a you know, house three hours from the nearest hardware store and it really a stretch of face and then uh, you know, things don't always go the way according to plan A, but you know, God just kept providing the teams, the supplies, the, the, you know, the prayers have really been important. The workers, um, you were kind of top of the mountain, it doesn't seem like there's many people. This was a medical team the neighboring mission had that we helped out with. They're just, yeah, people hike in, and yeah, there are people all over in Haiti. I don't think you go anywhere where there's not a lot of people. And uh, if the roads were any worse, this truck wouldn't be able to make it. It just barely could make it up with all the supplies. And so we just kept asking questions. This neighbor mission had equipment we could borrow, and it was really a blessing. We prayed for safety, and because the work is dangerous, a lot of hard physical labor, and crew had like 20 guys working most of the time. Thankful there weren't any injuries. And, uh, so the, the hard part's pretty much done. There's still a little bit of a plumbing and electrical work to do. We had a Canadian team came in and put in the cupboards for the kitchen. So <coughs> local and, and international work, workers. So I learned a lot about building, and we'd be happy to get 
get back to growing plants again. <laughs> that was really a challenge. And uh, so yeah, there's you can see kind of a fort and the, the old coffee plantation this, and our house there. Um, the whitest one. But this, this is all just coffee plantations back in the 1700s. And these are ruins. They got their independence in 1800 and built a big fort. This is the second biggest <coughs> fort in Haiti. So when the road gets fixed more, some tourists come up, but not a whole lot because the road is so difficult. But you know, the western line goes right up to this the fort there. And, um, a tourist thing, I think. And this is just another plantation. There's ruins all along that ridge, at the top of the mountain there. And then it's about an hour hike down to the, you know, where there's a little bit warmer and the beans grow better and there's springs. And people come up every day and work in their gardens. And, this is the neighboring, I mean, it's the hill next to the West Main land that we're developing, and you know, they're just burning off to plant corn and beans, and they erode inches of soil every year when they do this, so really a need for new crops and trees and things you don't have to dig up the soil as we take care of God's creation and try to keep it so that their kids will have something to garden. This is closer to the village, and there's little bean plants that are just growing black beans between the rocks. Uh, there's all kinds of gardens, <laughs> but it's a challenge. And uh, a lot of voodoo yet, but the churches are growing and God's word's going out. And we're looking forward to continuing with that. And like you saw at the medical clinic, the translators, they share uh, God's word and they pray with the people that make decisions to follow Jesus. And it's, it's really good to see. Mm -hmm. God's working out there. Have little, these are little plant trees I've planted that we can try. A lot of the ones from North Haiti, where we were, they just kind of sit there and don't grow in the cold mountain. We're, we're at 4,400 feet, it's about 20 degrees colder, but wow. some of the tropical trees, they just kind of sit there, so it's going to take a whole new set of things to grow. So we're trying them, and, but there's a lot of rain. So the coffee used to do well, we planted a little coffee, but even that. It's kind of a learning thing because it's so deforested. I think we need to get some trees going. These are a few things we grew this year. Like the, the altitude, there's sweet cucumber, which is the peanut bells, is what it usually is called. And then the little stuffing cucumbers, which is some things I tried and they did pretty well. Tomatoes grow well. Um, this is back uh, where we were at the campus for the last 10 years. So it's a peach palm, it's a starchy palm fruit. You boil it, and you get kind of like a potato. Tastes a little bit like uh, sweet potato and squash, but it has oil. It's a complete food, a lot of vitamins. I think that has a lot of potential. It can produce a lot of food like corn, where you don't have the hybrids and fertilizer like, like most of Haiti. It just doesn't have that available. So, and uh, <clears throat> star fruit was introduced, and it's really you know, spreading a lot in our area. Jackfruit, it's good fruit. It's juice too, which Haitians really love. And a few years ago, we were doing a lot with bananas, and that's pretty fast because you see how well they produce pretty soon. And these, this is a variety that's done really well. So it's being shared from farmer to farmer now. So these things up in North Haiti are still going on, even though we're not living there. <clears throat> the nursery is where they, how they propagate breadfruit. They still uh, get these the good fruits available and shared with the farmers. And most people just, <clears throat> they, <clears throat> they make their living off their gardens. The kids club, even when it's rainy, they still have a good turnout. Adult literacy, they do some community outreach also. <clears throat> they'll share with the, their neighbors and pray, pray with the sick. As you can see in their, their ministry too, and learn how to read, so they can read their Bibles. <clears throat> On Lagan Ave, we, we started there almost 20 years ago, started making Ringo leaf powder, and that, that's still going. Starfish is now working with the West Bay Mission there. They've expanded the gardens and making more leaf powder, and, uh, and the solar, solar dryers. So that's one of the things we hope to take the experience from there and bring it to more areas of Haiti, do it on a larger scale. <clears throat> so they're making these nice leaf powder. It's a concentrated nutrition supplement. So we've been doing that for a lot of years, and, continue that and expand it. And so we hope to have this new property too down where it's hot, up in the mountain where we are, and the ringer wouldn't grow very fast. So it's, you know, have things
things are adapted to the different areas. And then uh, we have these Creole health books. They only cost like dollar, dollar fifty to print. So they talk about first aid and nutrition, and they have a section on devotions and uh, about the plants, how to prevent a lot of illnesses and problems. There aren't a whole lot of resources in Haiti that are written. A lot of people still aren't on the internet either, although that's growing. So and this person is uh, bringing it to them, sharing it with a lot of, visiting a lot of different churches and telling them about it. He basically sells it at cost. And we've shared it with them and continue to share it with the Wesleyan churches. So, so thank you for your prayers and being a part of this. This is what we're hoping to do. We can do it and sell a team effort. Prayers and say there's a lot of, especially on I think the mountain we feel the spiritual oppression. There seems to be a spiritual mm -hmm. difficulties on the medical things of the other group and other things. You know, don't always go the way we plan, but God's, God's provided and worked things out. So, yeah. so mm -hmm. I have time for a question or two if you like, but time just spun out. Yeah, we're gonna. One of the cool things for me is, as I listen, and I'm gonna, I want to say it here as well this morning, that over the years, one of the things we've watched, because your field is plants and agriculture, agriculture, yours is medicine, and they love the Lord, so they're teaching people spiritually, and we saw at least three different places in there where they've been, brought those things. The nationals are doing those things, and they moved to somewhere else, and it happened where they were. The book, I remember that, the Moringa, and the nutritional stuff, and just, if, if you really knew the whole of this ministry, I think I said the first service, that uh, they're making an impact and moving from place to place as much as anybody I know. And, and of course, Haiti's a place where Nutrition's needed and the plants are needed. Last week our thing was sending seeds to Haiti, right? So we're really connected with that. And uh, so that, uh, just incredible to see that, right? So questions, Dave? Or I won't mention your name. The guy right there. Well, I was going to say, first of all, these pictures are certainly different from anything that I've ever seen before of Haiti. I, I didn't realize that the mountain was 4,000 feet up in the air and it was cold. I got several questions. Number one, what's the literacy rate up in that country? Because generally the better educated people are, the more they're able to do for themselves. Also, I see a lot of rocks. How do you till the ground up there? It's, it just seems like an impossible task. Or are there flat fields that you just can take a picture of? Okay, well, let's start with the rocks. I mean, they, they just work with picks and turn over the soil so then you can get the erosion a lot. But there's no, nothing, you wouldn't be able to drive a tractor up there. There are some little flat spots and they put a fence around the best spots to keep the cows out so they can grow sweet potatoes and things that the cows would just eat up. And yeah, plant a lot of sweet potatoes too and they get eaten up. <laughs> Literacy. But literacy. The cities have a lot more schools and literacy. The young people have pretty good literacy. But where we are, people just garden. Um, there's a lot of illiteracy. They didn't, you know, it was, there, the road was being built during the, the earthquake hit it, and the senator was killed, and basically it just stops a few miles past where we are. They're kind of at the end of the road because that hasn't been maintained. And, uh, it just, yeah, it, it's way behind. School. You don't have to school in the off season because people are working their gardens. That's what they make a living. There's no other jobs. So the kids and all, they're just working the gardens when it's getting ready for planting season or weeding, and then they harvest, and they have a few months of dry season to prepare the next crop. And I was second of the literacy rate with your book because we watched that kind of happen from the beginning and prayed for it. So we're excited about the book being there. But it sounds like maybe the younger generation can read that book and. And uh, where is the book mostly going out? Yeah, we offered it through all the, the Wesleyan churches in North Haiti. Oh, okay. So Thanks, shared it, but it is the pastors or another person who organized for each family to get a copy of the book. Each of the two, actually there's three books. One is for the schools that took 
was given the first two books for children, made a children's version. Oh wow, I think I heard about that. I remember that, yeah. Awesome. Another question or two. Right? 
Okay. One more, Lucille. I don't know what became of the creed. That question was asked in the first service film. Yeah, that's some charcoal. It's, it's a valuable commodity, so that's something they could, you know, cut down the tree, they just make a pit, and it crumbles into charcoal, and you can haul that down and sell it. And sometimes if your garden's way far away, you're afraid someone else is going to steal the tree and hike it down the mountain before you do. So basically you make your charcoal before someone else does. Or if you have a medical emergency that, or some financial emergency, that's kind of a bank account if you have trees. So everyone's poor, there's always financial emergencies, and it gets used up. You know, you guys mentioned cold, which is hard for us to imagine, but must be because of elevation. How cold does it get? It gets in the, I think, down to the upper 40 sometimes in like January. So then trees turned into firewood. Wow. Why don't they replant them? Yeah, we'll be planting some, but if you're if it's far away, like say most people have to hike up there during the day, they don't sleep up there. You know, at night it could get stolen. Um, if they have a table set up in the foyer, and uh, first service I said there's probably ten minutes people have some questions, you can uh, check them out at the table. Matter of fact, Corey, you actually picked, picked a great spot. As always say about being on the platform, so we can begin Facebook Live over here. But he's so tall, it doesn't matter. As a matter of fact, you were in the right spot, your head was still on top of the frame. <laughs> but uh, they're going to be in here a little bit afterwards and uh, out at the table out there. They have some things on the table we want you to uh, be made aware of. Number one, that their prayer list, they've mentioned that several times. Um, you know what, one of the things we learn a lot of times is, is back, back here we don't really get the spiritual oppression thing a lot. And uh, we live in a spiritual world, we really do. Really important for us to keep our missionaries in prayer. Um, they're going through stuff this week with Haiti, the unrest and everything, and we should be praying about that. And uh, so they have their prayer list out there. Be sure to sign up on there. They have their prayer cards that they've mentioned to remind you. Um, one, of my, one of my grandkids was here last night and grabbed, we had got like a full prayer card of all our missionaries. And uh, so I'm like, what are you going to do with that? So said, well, just look at them. Said no, you're supposed to pray for them. It's a prayer card. So don't just look at them. Pray for them when you see those uh, pictures. Be sure to take some of those. Also, I want to mention to you, we're taking an opportunity when we have missionaries in. We've had some local missionaries in recently, uh, Corey and Chris today and their family, to remember that we support them financially. The way that we do that is through faith promise. We uh, out on the table we have cards. Once a year, usually, we ask people to commit to that. What faith promise is. It's not your tithe, it's not money you earn. You pray, you ask God, hey God, what do you want me to do for these missionaries or for missionaries? Because in friendship, it all goes into one place. We send it out to 10, 10 different missionaries. And uh, so you pray about that. Check those cards out. Um, you guys have committed to it last season. We'd ask you to remember to pray about. Um, we pay, I think, out like once a quarter. And we've been short some quarters, and then we've got to go into the next quarter. So I'll be thinking about that. Check that out. Dave Brown, our missions committee, uh, I, uh, Janine Flickinger, and some of the others. How many are on the missions committee in here today? Just raise your hand real quick. Okay. They can answer some of your questions about how we support and stuff like that. Also, I always encourage missionaries that come to put their faith promise cards out. If you want to give to them individually, Chris and Corey can tell you how to do that. They've got faith promise cards out there that look a lot like ours. I'd encourage you to do that if you feel it. You know, to do that for them. We're going to take here at the end of the service a love offering. Back when Cindy and I were in mission work, uh, we got a lot of expenses from outside covered in different ways. Um, matter of fact, I was remembering we they, we actually had a fleet of mission vehicles when we came home. We could borrow one of those and use it. They don't have access to that kind of thing. So we always want to. Maybe the Lord's touched your heart today. You give a little something this morning just to send them off on and help them with extra expenses. If not, that's between you and the Lord. Um, if you, uh, you can make a check out right to Corey and Christy or to Friendship Wesleyan Church. We'll make sure it gives to them. We're going to take and, uh, a little offering right now. So Bob, if you'll come forward, we're going to have a quick word of prayer for them for the end of the service. Um, you remain seated, and, and uh, as soon as we're done with the offering, I'll give a benediction, and you can be dismissed to talk to uh, Corey and Chris and their kids that are here with us this morning. Let's pray. Father, we come to you. Thank you, Father, for the work and the message. Thank you right now. Father, I'm thinking of the Haitians 
that are at each of these ministry spots, and not just the ones that have been mentioned here this morning, but all across Haiti as they're experiencing unrest right now. That you'll keep them safe, you'll be with them. We thank you, Father, for our brothers and sisters in Christ in Haiti. That, Father, the ministry would grow uh, right now in each of these places as they treat people medically, as they plant agriculturally for their own nourishment, and then as they fight spiritual oppression, Father. We pray for your followers there to be strong in Christ. And then this family, Father, Corey and Chris and their kids, that you protect them and be with them, Lord. Even this week as they talk about the unrest and then the different things they deal with, Lord. Don't take them out of the world. Keep them from the evil one. Father, bless this offering right now um, that uh, Corey and Chris are provided for. All of their needs continue to bless them abundantly. We pray this in Jesus' name.